Some of you may recall the data breach with the credit reporting agency Equifax back in 2017. Anybody here receive a letter that your name, address, social security number, and birth date may have been compromised? Think about that for a few minutes because that's the same data that you use to identify yourself to your banks, your credit card company, or to your utility company, and now an unknown adversary has the same access. Just as a reminder, the Equifax breach resulted in a compromise of over 143 million accounts. That's close to half of the US population. What you may not know is that that breach could have been avoided had they applied a security update to a known weakness in their internet accessible systems. Closer to home, in December 2018, Rutland Regional Medical Center experienced a breach when an unknown adversary gained access to nine employee email accounts, which contained over 72,000 medical records. And the question is, why are medical records being shared in email and they have a centralized medical record system? If that's not alarming, in 2018, the Government Accountability Office released a report that a Department of Defense's weapons system had egregious vulnerabilities. For example, parts of the weapons system shut down from a simple scan of the computers. That's like someone knocking on your door, the door unlocks and automatically opens. There were default passwords found in some services and never changed. The security team reported they found those default passwords using freely available internet resources. And finally, there were vulnerabilities present that were discovered in a previous security assessment but not fixed. And just as a reminder, that was a weapons system. The case studies and breaches just described, that doesn't surprise me anymore. What haunts me is a congressional testimony by Richard Pethia, former director of the Computer Emergency Response Team at Carnegie Mellon. He testified about the state of cybersecurity on the internet and how the breaches and vulnerabilities just described occur far too often in organizations and how basic security defenses can help mitigate their occurrence. It's haunting because this testimony was in 1996. It's 2019 and we are still failing to implement those basic security controls that can help mitigate and protect our business and customer information, and apparently our weapon systems. There are now many computer emergency response teams throughout the world. They operate at a national level and at a regional level. Some large organizations also have their own internal certs. These certs are staffed by professionals that understand cybersecurity. They know how to identify vulnerabilities and they know how to fix them. They also provide organizations with guidance on how to recover from a cyber attack. And these certs also provide early warnings on vulnerabilities and how to mitigate their impact. The US CERT, which is part of the Department of Homeland Security, alerted Equifax to the vulnerability that led to their breach two months before the breach occurred. These certs are providing the same guidance over and over to little effect and a cyber breach can be costly. The Rutland medical breach costs are unknown, but we do know of one incidental cost. That is sending a letter to over 72,000 people at a cost of close to over $36,000 just for postage. So it's clear, we need more people to help work these issues out. Unfortunately, we have far more jobs available than we do people to fill those positions. Now, I'm working to fill that labor gap. I teach future cybersecurity professionals at the college level. And they're gonna get those big businesses worked out and hopefully our weapon systems. However, the organizations that are most impacted are the ones that we use every single day that underpin our local communities and make up over 96% of the businesses that exist in this country. Our small businesses, our sole proprietors, our mom and pop shops. These organizations often don't understand, don't know how to, or can't afford to implement those basic security controls, which makes them incredibly vulnerable. And studies show over 60% of small businesses shut down as a result of a cyber attack. Okay. Folks, there's hope. 
I'm excited to tell you about a group of students I don't get paid to teach. I'm a mentor for the U.S. Air Force Association's Cyber Patriots, which trains middle and high school students how to implement those basic security controls. The introductory modules, the basic training modules, are teaching middle school kids how to implement those same controls Richard Pethy had discussed in 1996. So what I'm proposing is that we crowdsource middle, high school, and college students to become the new era of cyber patriots that act as our local community computer emergency response teams, or CERTs. Organizations will pay a small fee, say $200 a year, to help finance a CERT that is staffed and managed by students at a local school to help organizations fulfill their security needs on a continuous basis. Now, you're probably concerned about middle and high school students overseeing the security in your office. <laughs> but that's probably because we don't understand cybersecurity. But think about this. Teenagers prepare and cook our food at restaurants. <laughs> Teenagers are our babysitters. A 16-year-old can be a lifeguard or an emergency medical responder. And teenagers are our camp counselors who we never meet, but we implicitly trust them in those positions with our kids. <laughs> but we understand those jobs and those roles, not so much cybersecurity and a cybersecurity defender. Yeah. And let's face it, folks, your kids know about, more about your computers than you do. <laughs> so let's utilize this untapped resource. We have empirical studies that demonstrate Students engaged in community-based learning can be ethical, mature, professional, creative, and work within small budgets to no budgets. South Burlington High School's Big Picture program is an exemplar of this type of teaching and learning model and graduate students that possess those qualities. So how does that relate to being a CERT? Outside the Patriots, with the guidance of a teacher, and a community-based advisory committee of cybersecurity and system and network administrators and business professionals can learn to secure computer systems, organization management skills, and learn communication skills verbally and non-verbally to technical and non-technical people. By managing the CERT, our cyber patriots will learn executive functioning, analytic, and customer service skills. Our cyber patriots can engage in higher order learning by transferring those skills to a much needed community service. In a presentation to a mom and pop shop on how to secure their computer systems in context to their business operations, a seventh grade student can demonstrate that they are developing or have developed or have mastered the common core comprehension and collaboration requirements. Virtually every city in this country has an untapped pool of potential cyber patriots. We need to embrace their potential. What if our cyber patriots performed a security assessment on the Equifax system to ensure that vulnerability was fixed? The Equifax breach is estimated to cost over $240 million. A $200 year investment to help protect your computer systems will be a great return on your investment. What if our middle school students performed a security assessment on a simulated weapon system that was built just like the real weapon system? Will it take a bunch of 14-year-olds to wake them up to their basic security needs? After knowing about these systemic cybersecurity problems since 1996, it just might. Thank you.